we had so many announcements of station, I didn't know when to start the show. Aloha, everyone. I'm your host, Jason Schwartz. We're here at the Neutral Zone. We're on KAKU 88.5 FM, the voice of Maui, and simulcast on Akaku Maui Community Media TV to old people like me. Channel 55. And we're up on uh, YouTube and MauiNeutralZone.com. You can see all of our shows. We have an archive. And my guest was here with me when we were doing a, another series called Mama Presents, which was Maui Arts and Music Association. And we were in Lahaina on Dickinson Street at a little gallery, uh, which was great because it featured, at the time, Two friends of mine, Marlena River, who did pottery, and Davo. Davo, I am so thankful to have you back here on the show. My goodness, you look younger than ever. Oh, <laughs> here, let me give you your $5 now, Jason. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, you know, it's great to see you. You are an artist of a mate in my mind. When, just as the timing, when I think of Maui and my introduction to Maui, remember, I lived in Lahaina, too, you know. That's right. He was in Lahaina, and I met him when I went to a Bob Dylan concert at the Royal Lahaina Tennis Stadium. And there online, it was a long wait waiting, there was someone that walked up and through and with, and he was so colorful and... We hit it off immediately. I guess two kids from New York. You from New York too, like me? No, my dad and mom are from New York, but no, I'm from L. I mean L. A. <laughs> I spent a lot of years in L. A. Poor but thing. I, in New York, and so yeah. I, when I met you, I thought you were great, and then you were doing art, and it was like, I don't know, it must have been like '89 or '90. It was back there when. Royal Lahaina Tennis Stadium was a big deal because otherwise right. there was no cultural center yet. That's right. And so that was the space. I remember seeing Third World there. But when, when I saw Bob Dylan, and I remembered most clearly of that night was you. Yeah, I mean, these were it was great, actually. A great thing to watch in that tennis stadium. stadium. Really intimate, kind of a beautiful space. Yeah. You know, sort yep. of like... I want to call it a soft McCoy theater. The Maui Arts and Cultural Center has a little 500-seat theater. So this tennis stadium, eh, maybe it had that, maybe a little bit less. Yeah. But it meant it was really terrific, and the backdrop was like, wow, this looks like paradise. And here I was, a, a young kid. Do you know that in, in 1988 and 89, I was a young kid? you got to talk, my friend, because I'll just keep talking. Davo, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Cons all, all things considered, I mean, it is up and down. Uh, well, yeah. you know, we're in the year 2024. And um, I saw you because this last year, and for a number of years, but you were the prize giver for the International Maui, International Peace Poets Poem. Still am. Remember? I and, still and do I'm it. I started there, yeah. and I was the rep and the Council um, cult, Culture of the Arts way back for Linda Lingle. That was, uh, there's I mean, lots of story with all this stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And that's when I met, you know, again, there, there's this guy, Davo. Wow, who is this guy? He's great. And then I got to see you. And then when I was doing that interview with you on our show, that was already... That was great. A, a that was a while afterwards. I, I still look at that sometimes. It's uh, really was well done, and Arielle w was in it, and, and she's just an angel. I love her. That's 20 years ago. Can you imagine we were actually 20 years ago? That sounds unbelievable. And that was already 10 years and more. I've been on Maui since uh, 1988. You're probably right before me, right? Somewhere 73. Oh, that's right before me. <laughs> Yeah, 73. Have you always been interested in art? Yeah, uh, my mom, I think my, my, I have to credit my mother amongst other women who have helped me in my life, but my mom 
always wanted me to be an artist. And so that's how I ended up. And fortunately, before she died, she was able to go to a big exhibit of mine on Rodeo Drive in a limo. And I bought her a, a purple purple sequin dress that she was not going to wear. I said, Mom, you have to wear this dress, which she did. And everybody said, oh, Mrs. Sherman, you look wonderful. And so she she saw me have a, a measure of success That's before great. she passed away. And uh, she never called me Davo. She always called me David. And uh, I actually got a video uh, in her old Buick uh, saying, thank you to Lynn Shu and thank you to all these people. And then at the end she goes, and as for you, Davo, and I went, uh-oh. She goes, son, I'm very proud of you. That's great. Yeah, and that's all a child really wants to hear. Wow, was the Rodeo Drive thing tied to Lynn Shu? No, that no, was no. tied to Lucia Kaiser which some people in Honolulu will recognize that name. Uh, she was married to the, into the Kaiser family. And Lucia was my agent in New York. And so she opened a lot of doors for me, Lucia did. She knew everybody in New York. Well, Maui was happy to get you in 73. You were in the middle of your art career then? Oh, no, 73, I was a surf bum uh, and pretty good at it. Actually, 73, I was in the jungles of Kalalau to escape the Vietnam War. I had my choice of going to the Vietnamese jungles or to the Kauai jungles. I chose the Kauai jungles. Was that when the Taylor camp was up? Yes. Yeah. So you probably know a lot of the same people of all these years that I know. From all oh, yeah. Time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would have stayed on Kauai if I didn't meet a, a beautiful local girl who wanted to move to Maui. And thank goodness we did because then the hurricanes started coming and wiping out the island. So uh, Isn't that funny? It was like a decade and then a decade later. Exactly. Again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Maui is truly no Kauai to me because Maui, I lived on the big island. I, I lived on Kauai. Uh, so I love those islands, but Maui. Get a little bit closer. Okay. Just so your voice is okay. more present. Okay. Is that closer? Right, no. see, yeah. <laughs> but Maui is special. It's no koi. It really, it really is. Uh, Maui. Oh, here's a story. When I was a child and painting paintings with my mom's lipstick inside her drawers, I remember one of them was a volcano that had two summits and it was erupting and there were palm trees and I'm, I'm doing this at a very young age and my mom said what are you doing with my lipstick and she says, oh, she says I gotta buy you art supplies you, this has got to stop but when I got to Maui and hitchhiked to the top, top of Haleakala I looked out to the big island and I saw Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa that's what I was doing when I was a child so I got this real strong sense that I had been here before. Wow. That's you a good... you been here all this time? Well, you know, I've all been all through the South Pacific. Mm -hmm. uh, I really wanted to live the life and paint like Gauguin. I ended up living the life, but not painting like Gauguin. And Your style through yeah. the years has, I want to say, mm -hmm. has changed. We all of us. You're a multi-dimensional, probably multimedia mm -hmm. artist, aren't you? Yes. But when I remember mm -hmm. the, by the way, he has a book out. We're going to talk about his book. It's called Pop Art and Neo Art, As I See It, As I Feel It by Davo. This is the hardcover one. Boy, red? Red is a great color. We'll talk about this, but what I think about here... When I first saw your art, I thought, oh, influence uh, like Peter Max, Andy Warhol-ish. And I thought, I wonder what the story is. And so maybe you'll help us understand. Because then, then I saw you, when you didn't have that as your medium, you had a different, but you always had a theme that runs through. That's you, which you'll, I'm sure, 
Well, let us see. it's always been just peace and love. I'm just an old hippie, and uh, I still feel that way, and I, I wish the world I'm with you. would come around. Uh, and I haven't given up hope. Uh, but I'll tell you, I tried abstract art. I tried cubism. Uh, I, I tried painting like Gauguin and Tahiti and all that, but it wasn't until I got a chance to meet Warhol back in the mid-'80s, and he took a liking to me. Uh, he didn't really show me how to paint. I learned that from his assistants, all of his young boys. And it was an interesting time. But the main thing about Andy is he was incredibly honest uh, if you knew him. If you didn't know him, he was... Charming. He, well, <laughs> he was... How can I say it? Diplomatic? If, he, he spoke very little to the, to, you know, the thing is, is off camera, out of the way of the press, he was a different person. And so I knew him both ways. But the important thing about Andy is, is when I realized I wanted to try pop art, the last time I saw him, uh, I said, Andy, I'm, I'm going to try pop art when I get back to Hawaii. And he goes, okay. And I said, I'm going to start with Marilyn Monroe. And he said, that's a very good place to start. And it was. So how would you describe pop art as you're defining it? And you were trying it, but you were obviously different than him and unique by the theory and thought behind it, by the style. I mean, just how happens I open the book and who do I... My my favorite, Marilyn, my Marilyn. favorite. Uh, yeah. Matter of fact, uh, it's, it's, I'm going to try to stick to stories that are not in the book because uh, there, there's so many. I went to Marilyn's grave with my mom for the first time, and mom tripped over Walter Matthau's freshly dug grave, oh, and she looked up and she says, "I didn't even know he died." I come, mom, come on, and we get to Marilyn's grave, crypt or whatever. And there was a, a, just dead flowers in her little urn. I said, this will not do. So I pull the dead flowers out. I see a red rose bush. So I go over with my, my mom's car keys, and I'm sawing this big, thick. I mean, my, my fingers were bleeding from the thorns. And I put it in there. And uh, that was my first visit of many to Marilyn's grave. And a lot of people don't know this, but one of my collectors, Hugh Hefner, is interred right next to her. Uh -huh. Yeah, he bought the crypt next to her, which was a, a wise move because nobody would go looking for his grave. A few people, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there he is, the yeah. rose. Uh, you've been at the Emmys and the Oscars and giving your pieces... Uh, yes. Or however, yes. donating them as part of a whole campaign throughout your career. Yes. Tell, tell us a little bit about it. I know that a lot is in the book, but yeah. I don't want to not tell, because you are, a fin in my mind, before I remember recognizing your pieces and when we sat those 20 years ago, but right. you've now continued on your career, and you were a very noted gallery uh, then you switched and you did what you're doing and you and then last year we had a fire yeah i remember that i know so the line of fire changed everything so did i'm did. really so thankful did. that this book is here me too because we started it only 3 months before the fire i had and literally the publisher said how do you want to end the book i said the fire just ended it and that's literally how the book ended, was with the fire, because everything was destroyed. Wow. Except for me and my car. And you were mostly an artist that did originals, or yes. every piece, yes. even if you were doing, like I have uh, JFK. Yeah, one of, my, one of my favorites, really, and truly. 
even when I see the one of them, and then I see the one in the book, I notice different colors because right. each one is a unique statement. And that that's what I always appreciated about you. But so now, yes. all the collectors in the world are going, hey, I, like I have a friend, Lynn. He, he's... I know. I just <laughs> met. I just met him. Uh, I mean, again. Yeah, sure. And he told me about all the pieces that he has. Yeah. So I mean, the people in the world that have Davo art, like myself, really appreciate. It. And then you gave me a piece at last year's International Peace Poem. Correct. Awards. Yes. And that again, that's mm -hmm. your own unique. You call it neo pop, I guess. I, if I'm going to define, correct. It, describe it. But it was totally different. Nothing like the Warhol or I say Peter Max only because. Well, now Peter Max, uh, I relate to actually more than Warhol. Oh yeah. Believe it or not, Andy opened the door for me. Peter Max loved to use the screens, but you see brush strokes, big bold brush strokes. He loved to paint. Okay. So he might do the Statue of Liberty, but my God, one next to the other, you know. And I said, that's the way I want to do pop art. But then I extended it by adding the phosphorescent glow. Which makes it a unique experience. Yes. I, yeah, I, mean, I have two in my, the first one you gave me a few years ago, I forgot what the, you've honored me with a few pieces over the time. Well, you're getting one today. Uh, really? Yeah, you want to see it? Right. Um, Can we? See it? Yeah, let's see it. Wow. Now, this is very, very special to me because one of my collectors knew that they were going to do the 50th anniversary of the moonwalk. And he says, Dava, are you coming to NASA for it? And I said, yeah, right. He goes, no, you are coming to NASA. And he booked me, put me up in the suite in the Hilton had a chauffeur for three days and a VIP pass, so I did wow. go. Uh, so, for example, this is for you, Jason. Thank you. It's one of my favorites. It's small, but it's very potent. You could read a book to this when you turn the lights off. I was going to say, I have one of Elton John, years ago, Elton John. Oh, a nice, healthy frame. Oh, yes. Wow. You guys are going to see more. And it says, Giant Leap. July 20th, 1969. So, I am, thank you very much. You're, you're very welcome, thank so you. So, the glow in the dark, so mm -hmm. I will see this, just like I see Elton lighting up. Correct. Also that big heart with love and peace. Correct. I liked at the bottom where you labeled it, this is the day. No and politics. Is that what that is? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No politics. I'm, I, I told myself, no politics. That's a good thing to say. Yeah. You know? And Liz Jane Brown's husband, Paul, Paul was in the... And he actually gave me that little bit of advice just sitting there in the, in the waiting room. And I went, I'm going to... You know, things come to you and you don't know why. Okay? And then later on you go, oh, that's why. Liz James, that's a long time ago, but see, because we're here a long time. Yes. The name Liz James, Liz and then James. Liz James Brown. Correct. All these yeah, years. great lady, and yeah. very influential to my career because she used to write up columns on me, especially when I would go to the Grammys, and I would I would be in the limo going or coming from the Grammys, and I would call her on the phone and give her a report. By the time I got back to Maui. I had a beautiful article in the paper. Wow. So she really... Those were the days B.I. <laughs> before internet. Yes, yes. When being in a paper was meaningful. Yes. Where we understood promotion means yeah. look somewhere. Right now, it's gotten crazy. I can't relate to it. I, I don't do any of those Facebook, TikTok. I do nothing. I mean, literally, I don't even do email. Okay? The gallery... My representatives do that for me. Uh, what I do do is if somebody does a commission, I talk to them on the phone about what they want and, and, and everything. And that I do. And then, of course, once it's completed 
in the case of some clients, they want me to deliver it to them, right. like in Chicago, and then put me up at the Four Seasons. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, that's, I have the, like, matter of fact, I'm going to mention a name. Please. Don Phillips. Fantastic man, incredible family. He'll be here in December, and I can't wait. Wow. Yes. And that's all I can tell you about him because he's, I, I can't say any more. He's just a great guy and a great collector. Well, what well, meaning? If you know Don Phillips, you know Don Phillips. <laughs> exactly. If you don't, yeah. you won't. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? I mean, over your career, you've you've not only done, com like you say, commissioned art, yeah. but I just kept seeing your presence in these award shows yeah. and how many of the celebrities were very honored that you used them as part of your pictorial, uh, you know, what do I want to say, announcement and expression of... We all right? Here comes Tony. Hey, Tony, okay. here's your painting. Oh, look at that. Okay, can you take it on camera? It's on camera. Here. Here it oh, are you there? Here See, it is. There is. That's for you in the studio. Awesome. So remember, when you turn Light off the it. lights, it's going to glow. <laughs> I bet if you turn the lights off right now, but we don't want to do that. We're in the studio. No, no, no. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Oh, great. Mahalo. Thank Mahalo you. Mahalo Nui. What beautiful gifts you've given us. Well, you know what? I, I just feel so honored to be given the gift of art because uh, it's been said that if you do what you love, you know, you, you're, I was gonna say, you're you, gonna be a success. And, and it's true, I, that's what I do. I do what I love and I, I am a success. I've never wanted wealth or fame, okay? I just wanted to make a living and, and be able to live on Maui. And I've had a little bit more than that, but uh, not by design, okay? Uh, and as long as we're on this subject, I want everybody to know out there that if you have a, some kind of a benefit or an art auction or something like that to generate money for charity, please get in touch with me. And you will not get a poster, you will get an original painting. You're a generous man. Well, uh, you have to pay back. No, 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 you, no I'm... You know, you just have to, you know. <laughs> you know, you're singing to the choir. That's right. Yeah. Can you imagine how many years we've been talking about peace? We've been talking about environment. Mm -hmm. We've talked about cooperation and love and how much music and, and the art of, of these times and the Hawaiian culture. I'm sure you've been immersed Especially living on uh, the west side there, I know. I love my. Well, cooking. I was going to say you're wearing yeah. sort of. Is that a doctor's smock? Do I call that? This is because I wasn't sure. Uh, this is as p political as I'm going to get today. Okay. Okay. But there is. There it is. Maui right strong. Maui strong. Aren't we? And Momi Kiahi. And your family, and your son, and your grandson, thank you very much. That's the family right there. Well, you know, we've gone through a change here. Uh, you know, I guess you'd say of global proportions. To us, it's the whole world. Now, this may sound a funny thing to say, but here, watch how it fits. <laughs> Years ago, I said, before, as the Internet was just getting started, we have the Maui Arts and Music Association, MAMA. If we all brand there and in this banner showcase art and music and the culture of these islands and raise money for environmental solutions, we can get money and input from all around the world to help us create paradise here, elevate the Hawaiian culture, and showcase the world through a central hub Mama and Papa. Now, how long have I been saying that? And I, and I, uh, the reason I bring it up is now the world has heard Maui. And right now, the whole world, in discovering what's going on here and re-energizing the culture, 
That idea of showcase online, I started it years ago and called it Gallery Without Walls. And I only had one real visitor that I can remember, and that was the IRS. Oh. <laughs> they audited me because they figured, man, this thing is probably slamming and doing business. Boy, were they I wrong. I never had a single anything. Yeah, yeah. But that's when I felt, okay, I am now certified. But it's that idea of showcasing art and music to the world right. and through that portal, and even now more than ever, and elevating the things that we can show. You are an artist. Because you did originals, you, you don't have as many copies. But in what you're showcasing here, you have, a, a, an, I say, an opportunity to help be one of those artists to lead this kind of effort now. Think of all the artists here on the islands and all over the world, but and all the cultures that we could showcase, and a word like Maui strong, and and you know they just started this little place in Wailuku, a little place. <laughs> they uh, the Hawaiian culture, the new Hawaiian cultural center, and they named it. Do you know the name of that place? No, I do not. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Don't be sorry. Neither do I, because, <laughs> of, because it's, it's Hawaiian, which there's nothing wrong with Hawaiian, obviously, but if it doesn't translate easily, it's going to be the word mama. That's why Maui Arts and Music Association is meant to be an inclusive model, to be able to showcase groups like that and others under a banner. We don't want to steal the light we want to focus the light, you know, and that peace and love that you feel, that we feel so strongly here in Maui. Yes, we yeah. can put out to the world and have have them reach back in love. Especially, we have such amazing talents here. You know, over the years, you probably I could name names. I think we all could name names, but here on Maui, you remember any special? Musical people and events that have happened in Maui over your time, or art shows. Remember uh, Elton John. Remember the Tiger. El El Elton John. Uh, I, th I believe it was his last uh, two performances at the Mac. Uh, the first one, I got the VIP ticket. Then they decided to do a second show, so I bought the cheapest ticket and went to that. Well, I'm glad I did because it was the second show that the shuttle went overhead and he did an 18-minute version of Rocket Man directly to the shuttle. That was their... Wow. Yeah. That w so I almost missed it, but I said, nope, I'm going to get a cheap ticket. I went, and then I wore my, my Davo coat, which is like a Technicolor coat. Is it in here in the book? Yeah, it's in there. And the thing is... Um, I'm wearing it, and after the show, before Elton leaves the stage, I go, Elton, I want to go to your party, because he was going to L.A., because after the Oscars, he has a famous Oscar party. I said, I want to go to your party, and he looks down at me and goes, wear that coat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't go. Uh, I didn't have enough time to prepare. I, that, that was one that I missed, because I, if I'd gone on a plane... And, and flown there, I could have gone to Elton John's Oscar party, and I, that would have been a blast. But I, I can say this. I have laid Elton John, and, of course, with flowers. And, uh, and that was an interesting story. That's in the book, so I won't tell you that. But uh, hey, Elton, Elton... Tease us, tease us. Well, I, I gave him a lay the year before, and... This, this is at a Music Cares event, which is uh, the fundraising arm of the Grammys. And I presented a, uh, my Lele to, to Sting, and he goes, thanks for the bushes. I go, what a brat, man. And I turn around. Instead of giving my Plumeria Lele to his wife, I turned around, and there's Elton with his boyfriend. I said, Elton, do you mind if I lay you? And he says, please. <laughs> and so I have a great picture of me right after I gave out the lay. And he's, I've met him so many times at the Hyatt Regency. And I just saw, I don't know, I keep running into Elton John, which I think he's a great talent and a, and a really, he's been very nice to me. 
everyone should be nice to you. Oh. You are just a... <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. You've been a, just a, like a real... I don't know. When I think of, of art and I think of Maui and I think of people that have added and contributed, I always said... I'm not going to want to come here and take from this place. I want to come here and give. Mm. And that's what I've always noticed Thank about you. you. Thank You're you. You're just a, just a giving, loving guy. And that group out there with the poetry, I want you to know, they have really had some years where, the, you know, the, there are even more reasons for the kids to write about peace. Amen. My Amen. goodness, but your art has been there. I remember years ago I had uh, Richard Fields, may he rest in peace. You know, he just yeah. passed away. Uh, no, I did not know that. In this last year. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And George Allen. And George Allen, George yeah. George Allen. I think coming up. He and was a great guy. George when you walk into the Cultural Center and there are yes. all his little pieces right I think now. it's 100 paintings. All just gifted to the Cultural Center. Uh his wife, Janet, really was interested in Hawaiian plants. And Kalama, my brother, and her, they'd get together and up at, you know, George's house. And they'd be out in the garden just talking about Hawaiian plants. And I'd be in there, you know, with George. And those were really wonderful days. And I, I really do miss George a lot. And Janet. Yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, you know, um, when the <laughs> there's an old blues song, when the Lord gets ready, you gots to move. Mm -hmm. And that's so true. So uh, When I think of George, I think not only as just a humble, beautiful guy, oh, way, you know, from Lahaina days, absolutely. but I remember at the Cultural Center, he told me that everything he does is with a palette knife. And... So that's something to really, when you go there and see all his pieces and realizing the different techniques that people have. That cultural center, boy, that, they still have a lot of the original art that they had from way back, way back. 1993 they opened. Yeah, they got a big mural by Debra, and I love her work. Uh, Debra. Debra, it's just, yeah. uh, I, hi, Debra. <laughs> <laughs> And Tony Walholm at the top of oh, the stairs, that gigantic piece. And see, I, I and always... And Kikuyama with oh, those yeah. sculptures. Yes, with, yes. With the metal. Absolutely. They should have a Davo. No, I don't think so. No? No, because how are they going to turn off the lights to show people? Oh, that's true. As yeah. the show, it looked like the exit sign in the I'm, theater. I, I need a very special venue for my okay. art. and. To show it, and then uh, once somebody acquires it, they can figure out what to do with it. I mean, I love. I mean, I, when at night when I see it light up, I'm, and it's in my bedroom, so I got a couple of them in there. Well, that's a good place for them. Bedroom is good. I, I got to tell you, can I? This is a quick story. Oh yeah, please. Big collector in Malibu. Uh, her, she calls me. I'm in LA with my mom. She goes, Davo. Did you bring any paintings? I said, yes. My dad's here. Bring them over. So I drive on out to Malibu in my mom's old Buick, and I go down this windy driveway, tennis courts, all this, go in, spiral staircase, marble, you know, just a palace. And her dad looks like Jackie Mason. He comes out of the bedroom and goes, oh, so you're the artist. I said, y yes. He goes, and these are your paintings? I said, yes. Okay, how much is that one? I go, well, in the gallery, it would be 3000 So for you, it's 1200 I made sure everything was less than half, even less than half. He said, okay, I'll take it. He goes down the line, five paintings, takes them, okay? Finally, there's one painting left, and he goes, he doesn't say anything about it. I go, uh, Mr. Carcomi, what about that painting? He goes, okay, how much? And I pick it up, and I said, no, this one's on me. And he wrote me a big, fat check. And, uh, yeah, so then Vicky sold that place. That's his daughter. And now she has a penthouse on Wilshire. I'm going, if I had that Malibu place, no way in hell I'd be in a penthouse on it. But I guess she just needed to be near I-Magnets and, 
and Rodeo Drive. I don't know. Is I Magnum still open? Uh, no, I don't think so. so the world has That's shifted. old school. No retail Pretty anymore. Pretty soon there won't even be a Macy's anymore. I mean, the, the galleries, the, we're lucky that the galleries are staying open, aren't they? What do artists do when they don't have a gallery? Do they do like I was thinking, a gallery without walls? They do it all themselves now. But a central location to showcase all of Hawaiian art, would that be an outlet? Would some of these artists be interested in showcasing? I would. Right? I would. Like you say. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, we'll talk about, again, we'll talk yeah. about that offline. Yeah. Right? You're going to lunch with me. You got we'll it. Talk, we'll talk about it over lunch. Okay. It's either Marcos or the lemongrass. We'll see. Both good choices. Do you want Italian or do you want Vietnamese? Oh, boy. Yeah. What do you want? I think because Marcos is so close. <laughs> okay, we'll take Marcos. Yeah, and plus I haven't been there in a long time. Okay, that'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. Just seeing you is fun. Thank you. And you bring and, back all those good memories. Versa. You and make me feel younger and happier <laughs> and someone who is, I want to say, innocent like a child. I don't know if you're innocent like a child, but not you're anymore. childlike because <laughs> peace and love take us, you know, into a real beautiful loving space. You know, and when I think of neo art and pop art, I don't know how to really describe it except you capture just a really good time in my life, you know, as I'm going. It just brings... Incidentally, Marilyn's been very good to me. You know who's going to be good to me in the future? How about Taylor? Taylor Swift. You better believe it. I'm working on her now. Oh, okay. And uh, we are going to be opening a new gallery, and I can't tell you any more. But Taylor Swift's going to be in there along with the Statue of Liberty and a few other surprises. Good, good, good. Yeah, so I am, I'm working. I, I, work, I worked last night on a big painting. So, you know, sometimes I just put it on the bed and paint. Sometimes, I, you know, just all... Have what to be a pleasure to be doing what you love, isn't it? Yeah, amen. Amen. Yep. No, it's... Put it on the bed and paint? Oh, yeah. Well, see, I'm not an easel painter. What I would do is paint most of my paintings flat and then take them into the gallery, put it on an easel, and do fine-tuning. And then, of course, it was always great to sign it right there in front of the clients. They always love that. You know, because it's show business, you know. It really is, you know. It's, what do you think's happening there in Lahaina? You think there's going to be a gallery any time in the next I've been hearing I've been hearing rumors, but it's not up to me to spread them. I'll just keep them to myself until they come to fruition. But uh, I hear that there are people... Uh, people I respect that are getting ready to open. That are building still around and available to do I, that. I believe so. So it's going to change the complexion of how it might be out there. I was wondering, I mean, uh, Lahaina is not replaceable anywhere near to be in the same way as that intimate, cloistered mm -hmm. art mecca, you know. I, what were we, the number... God knows, three in the world of art sales well, or six or something that, crazy. That's what the Tremendous. salesman. That's what the salesman would say. I I I don't go but there. Meaning that we were a we were a mecca for art for a little a town. Lot of art. A little for town, a little we had town. A lot going on. We we did we did and uh, and still can. You know that center that you were talking about. One day I was just walking down uh, Front Street, and as I passed the door out of the corner of my eye. I go, I couldn't have seen that. And I look, it was the Battle of Tetuan by Dolly. 13 feet high, 20 feet long. The original was on the wall. Wow. I said, I'm hallucinating. I mean, you know, I must be. Nope, they had it there, and it was wow. for sale. Wow. And I, I thought that was pretty darn amazing. <laughs> pretty amazing. Yes. And those guys, I think, it's, aren't the center guys the guys that got in trouble? Uh, yeah, Jim Killett. 
was his name. No, no, Jim Killer. Jim and Nancy Jim, Killer. No, they were good. Oh, then they were good. They were good. But who was the other one that got in trouble? Uh, the, guy, mm-hmm. the guys that were selling the phony dollies and. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, as a matter of oh, fact, they no, flew me over. Them. They flew me over to Honolulu, to you know, be part of their staff, and I just partied, party, party. And the guy goes, "Hey, listen, you want to stay with us? You got to cut this out." And I said. I don't want to stay with you. <laughs> <laughs> and they went to jail, so I'm glad I didn't. Wow. Yeah, they they were they were not good art people. Wow. So, uh, th- through these years, have you had any um, highlights that you want to? I know you say you don't want to be pointing out in the book. The book is a real good yeah. overview. Is oh, it cr- hey, can I? T- Bob Dylan. I love Bob Dylan. Which, incidentally, I love his newest album. It's called uh, Rough and Rowdy Ways. But anyway, I think Bob Dylan's one of the greatest songwriters and musicians. A lot of people don't like his voice. I love it. But anyway, at the last Music Cares dinner I went to, uh, the cheapest seat was $1,500, and that's what I bought. So I was way back in lower Sebelovia, okay? (laughs) Fortunately, I, and I, I mean, I got really wasted, okay? But fortunately, I, I needed to go to the restroom at the right time. Here's, it's all timing. Here comes this Texan who had just bought a $10,000 Bob Dylan of mine. And he goes, Davo, where are you sitting? And I said, way back there. He says, no, you come with me. He had a table for ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a seat. Whoa. One seat was empty. He says, no, you're sitting there. Oh, good. Wow. And shortly after that, Bob Dylan came out. And again, I was so wasted. The only thing I can remember, he did a 35-minute speech. I heard it was really something. Uh, <clears throat> when he got to Bob Dylan, he, he said, I mean, when he got to, excuse me, to Jimi Hendrix, he said, Jimmy, I wish you were here tonight. And for Bob to say that amongst living people and dead people, to focus on Jimi Hendrix and say, Jimmy, I wish you were here tonight, I just started crying. I'll never forget that. Wow. And then we just did this wonderful tribute to Jimi Hendrix right at the Mac, and it was amazing. Wow. Yeah. That was my last Music Cares dinner, and I really don't think I'm going to be doing any more award shows unless they're on Maui. Yeah, I just... Uh, I like that idea. Let's do one yeah, on Maui. Yeah, yeah, that that's fine. I just don't want to... Uh, well, for one thing, I just have no desire to go back to L.A. at all. And very little desire to go back to New York, for that matter. Uh, nope, nope. Been there, done that. There's other places to go. Any places in mind? Well, um, I I think I'm going to be going to Thailand pretty soon. Oh. Yeah. It's strangely enough, because I like an- animals that they have, like they have things like tigers that you can pet and uh, elephants that you can ride and boa constrictors that you can wear on your around your neck that don't kill you. And <laughs> How do you know? The one, yeah. those that live right it's, through I, the experience. I love those all are the, the good ones. I just, I, <laughs> I love animals. So, you know, if you're in, if you're in uh, the Middle East, you ride a camel, and I've done that. Now you're getting excited. You're going to think you're going to do your art there, or just for yeah. A visit? Yeah, I'm gonna, you, yeah, because I can do my art anywhere, and I can roll it up, put it in a tube, and it's, you know, it's in. I meant subject matter wise. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the last time I, when I was in Bali, believe it or not, I did a really cool Jimi Hendrix oh. while I was in Bali, and uh, unfortunately, it burned up in the fire before it could get sold. But uh, it was really, really quite good. I'm not sure if it's in the book or not. You know, Jason, believe it or not, I haven't really read the book yet myself. I've uh, I've kind of been waiting. I don't know what I'm waiting for, but people, 
have called me and from all over the world and said they really enjoy the book. They yeah. really think it's it's quite quite nice. And it really I mean here's Bob Marley, Michael Jackson, Jim Morrison, President Obama. Oh, so, Carlos Carlos yeah. used to come by the gallery quite often. And <clears throat> matter of fact, at first he came by with his wife, then he started coming by with his girlfriend who is now his new wife. Oh. Cindy Blackman is also his drummer. And uh, Carlos and I have had some really nice, he would come in and he just liked to, you know, hang out until all the people realized he was in the gallery. And then it was. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah, he'd <laughs> disappear. Understand. Well. I can understand, you know, I've never had that kind of adulation, nor would I want to, but I, I hear that Bob Dylan really dislikes it, okay? That's why he doesn't. He just doesn't allow it. But I've been told by people that have sat next to him on a bench, and at first they didn't knew, know who he was, and he carried on a full-on conversation with them, and then all of a sudden they said, wait a minute, you're Bob Dylan. He's gone. Because he knows what happens next. I love everything you've ever done. You know, and it's a broken record. It's uh, that kind of stuff. It's not that he doesn't appreciate. It's sa same when you go to a Bob Dylan concert. Leave your expectations at home, because Bob's going to give you what he wants to give you. Take Every it show's or a leave it. Show. Absolutely. Yeah. And same with you. True. <laughs> you're a, you're a, a master of disaster. Uh-oh. Oh, all right. Arielle doesn't realize she's on the air with us. Can she, can she hear no, us? I, Aww. I could pick her up. Yeah, pick her she up. She would probably. I would love it. I love well, it. Would, she's gone already. Aww. We could call her back. Hey, we're calling you from the air. Yeah, call her back. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let me see. I've got these goodies in here. Uh, do you need a Davo cap by any chance? I if I have a Davo cap, but you look so good without a cap on it. I, I mean, what do you think? You want it? Yeah. Is okay. It? You got to wear it for the rest of the interview. That's oh, the only. Okay. okay. And you got you got your book. Okay. Yeah. And oh. Stevie Wonder. Boy. We're in a this different really studio. This really does express our times. Isn't there a studio that has like a little Raggedy Ann doll in it? Is that another studio? There was a... You mean it might have been back on some picture yeah, in here? It was either here. Is there another studio where they... No. Huh. I don't see it anymore. Well, it totally but, keeps changing it to what may be going okay, on. Okay, well, time. anyway, I brought this. This is for was to be for Raggedy Ann. <laughs> it's her new boyfriend. Uh -huh. There's Tony. What happened to Raggedy Ann, Tony? Ah, uh -huh. there. Right on. That's her new boyfriend, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> right, cool. Thank you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> do we still have a little bit of time? Because I've got, I've got some people I that want I want to mention. Okay, I want to say thank you to my mother because she was the real driving force when I was young to be an artist, and she knew I was going to be an artist. And That's terrific. Mom was always right, even though I didn't realize it at the time. She was always right, and she, she was a very conservative woman. Matter of fact, she was a total Republican. And she said, you know, Dave, when you're young, if you're— not Democrat, you have no heart. But she said, Dave, when you're old, if you're not Republican, you have no brains. Wow. Pretty profound, huh? Uh, I think that but uh, anyway, I'm young. That's I'm, mom's quote. Okay. Uh, we're not supposed to be political today, right? We won't. Well, that's, that was my mom, not me. Okay, now uh, then there was uh, Mrs. Loeb, my art teacher in high school, who told me when I got a no, notice from the draft 
to rip it up and throw it in the trash to ignore the war, it'll go away. And I did it, and she was right. And then, of course, Alexandra Morrow, one of the founders of the Art Society. I remember she was a great lady. She was the Grand Madame. When did she pass away? A while ago. Not too long before no. the fire, I don't think. Well, she was, she had that house right there on Front Street. Forever. Yeah, which is, the, is oh, that, just the pool. Oh, is that right? Yeah, gone. Just gone. Wow. Uh, Lynn Shu. I have to mention Lynn Shu because Lynn, I'll never Village forget. Village Gallery, that was like a home, huh? I was underneath the banyan tree, and the birds were pooping on my paintings. And, you know, I'm. Uh, she came up, and she says, I'm opening a new gallery. I want you to come and be with it. And I went, oh, my God. You know, so that, I, I, because of that gallery, that's how I met the Grammys people. They came in and bingo. So, and then after Lynn is Belinda Lay. I want to mention her. Belinda was very good to me. Uh, Cliff Bell is now my agent, manager, gallery owner. Mm -hmm. And Cliff is a former Navy SEAL. You don't want to mess with him because he could kill you. You wouldn't know you were dead. <laughs> and then there's Spiros Venus. There's a name from the past. Spiros Venus, wow. John Venus. Way back when, Way when television back was... But I, yeah. I don't want to forget Spiros. Because, what a name. Spiros Constantine Venus. Do you think he's Greek? <laughs> Okay. How many? That's thirty years ago. Thirty-five. Maybe. Oh yeah. I remember. And he was—he was a tremendous help to me and very supportive. Uh, Bill Mitchell, the publisher and ghost uh, author of my book, Bill uh -huh. Mitchell, and a very fine abstract artist himself. <clears throat> and I already mentioned Don Phillips, who we, we will not mention. And of course, there's, I think there's this Jason Schwartz. God. God, you know this guy yeah. a long time. Yeah. Well, thank thank you. you for that. Thank you, Jason. I don't know. I just um, hold certain people special in my heart. Thank you. And just nothing but good news. Thank you. Uh, you know? I know. Well, you know, we've been through a lot. We've been through hell, literally. Um, you know, my mother was Jewish, my father Christian, and she wanted me to be raised Christian. So uh, I finally, after I found out that mom was Jewish, I decided to research my Jewish side. And oh, and I have to say, when that fire happened, the fire was looking at my Akoli, but it was Jesus that reached down and grabbed me out of the flames. Where were you when the whole thing started? I was in my studio, and the man... Actually, I was napping because I was going out to dinner to, at the Lahaina Fish Company for lobster that night. Well, obviously, that didn't happen. But the manager kept pounding on the door, so I go to the door, and I go, what? She goes, look. And there's this black cloud like I've never seen before, so ominous. And obviously, the gas station must have blown up because it was like you know, oil or something. And the fire was literally at our apartment building. Where were you, in the middle I, of the I, I was at Weinberg Court Apartments on, oh. right there, a three, and the, you know, it was brick, brick, completely destroyed, okay? My Jeep was out in the parking lot. That was there, that that's got spared. My scooters melted, but anyway. Your Jeep made it? My Jeep made it, but I never went and picked it up. I just left it <laughs> because the car that saved me was Kevin from Salvation Army in Lahaina sold me their old Salvation Army van, which I told Kevin when I saw him, I said, you know, that van, I'm going to be buried in that van. It, it, it literally saved our lives. Wow. And can you guess what painting was in the back? What painting I drove out with? No, you can't guess. Elon Musk. Really? It was a commission. So Elon Musk made it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, strange, huh? Wow. So, 
was it for him or someone that wanted it? It was right. somebody who wanted him, but I have just since decided not to sell it. Uh, and I have a special reason for that, which we won't mention over the... Over the political airwaves. Yeah, yeah correct, <laughs> correct. But I decided I'm going to keep that. Wow. Well, I want to make sure that we, we've got... Oh, a couple of minutes left. Okay. I'm just yeah. Just looking here. Okay. In fact, we have, if I can see clearly, <laughs> I can't see clearly. It looks like one Tony and a half will, minutes. Tony will come in and tell you. He'll just tap on our head. He'll say. Is that four and a half or two? I think it's one and a half minutes. Uh oh. Well, that's okay. Davo, thank yes. you for coming on the show, really. And, uh, Thank you. You're always welcome you. back here. Thank you. We, at lunch, you'll give me a thing so I can put it on the screen so whatever, people will be able to be in touch Whatever with you. you want. You You've always get. been an inspiration and a true artist, a true artist with a great, loving, open spirit. And um, I'm so glad to have been able to bring you back here in, in our newest incarnation. Here at the neutral zone, it is anything but neutral. I'm going to say mahalo nui loa, okay? That, and you know what that means. Thank you very much. Correct, and aloha to everybody out there. And please remember, if you need a painting for an auction, what, yeah. you, you know, cancer, whatever, just get in touch great, with great, me. Great, great, great. We'll put the information up. Thank We're you. getting ready to leave you. Okay. We're thrilled. Thank you, Davo. Thank you. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you. We're here at the Neutral Zone. Blessings to everyone.